Hi, thank you for watching this video. What we're going to look at today is how to stop a Python script either through our keyboard or programmatically. So uh, by that we mean within the script itself. So to start with, let's have a think about why we'd want to stop a Python script in the first place. So as a programming language, the way that Python works is that it reads our code line by line and it's going to stop at the end of the script by default anyway. So in my little um, test script over here, I'm just defining a variable and I'm asking uh, Python to print the variable. So if I run this, I'm hoping my print statement will um, will print and Python will, will then stop running. So there you go. Hello, my name is Rakesh and I'm, uh, Python has stopped. So why would we want to stop it early? Well, there are a whole number of reasons why it might be necessary, but I really think they fall into two distinct categories. Category number one is if we've made an error with our code and for some reason the program just keeps running and running in some kind of infinite or, or very, very long loop um, and we need, to, we need to stop it. And I'm sure anyone who's used Python before can probably relate to that. Uh, and the second category is when the code itself is correct, but we want to stop our script from running if certain conditions either have or have not been met. So as I hope you can you can understand that with, with category two, um, we can actually build a stop mechanism within our code. And that's the programmatic method we're gonna look at. But for, for category one, we really need to understand how to stop our code arbitrarily. So when the program is actually running and we can't get back into the code, how do we stop it? And that's when we use our keyboard. So let's have a look at these two options in more detail now. And we're going to start with the keyboard stops. So let's uh, have a look at some code. I've already written some code here. Um, and this is really going to cause the problem that we're looking to stop. So I've got uh, x is equal to 1. And then um, while x is greater than or equal to 1, we're going to print x. And then we're going to add 1 onto x. So what this code essentially is saying is uh, asking Python just to um, indefinitely print out number sequentially. I've put no conditions in there for it to stop at any point in time. I'm going to run the code through my command prompt just because I think it's going to be easier to see. Uh, so let me go to my drive and it's called test.py. So what I'm expecting to happen here is that when I press that enter button we're just going to start seeing numbers uh, printed out sequentially. There you go. Okay so how do I stop this? How do I stop this script from running now? I obviously can't access or go back into the script, so I'm going to use my keyboard. Uh, one of the most common methods is a keyboard interrupt, and it's a shortcut, uh, and it will be different depending on the type of machine you're, you're running. So I'm using a Windows machine, and my keyboard interrupt shortcut is the Control c key. It will be different on a Mac or a Unix system. Um, okay, so let's try it. So with Windows, it's Control c you go and as I hope you can see over here I've got a little message up from Python this has actually come back from the Python interpreter telling me I've used the keyboard interrupt shortcut but the program has stopped so that's a really effective way to, to stop a program from running but uh, unfortunately there may be times when that that just doesn't work it's worked in our simple code example but it won't work in all cases so if we go back to our code um, okay, so if I put an accept statement in here, it will actually override the um, keyboard interrupt shortcut. So I'm going to make this try. So I'm going to say try to print x. And then I can put my accept over here. So I can actually explicitly exclude keyboard interrupt by actually um, specifying. So I'm saying on this this instance, what this code is saying is carry on printing and if someone tries to do a keyboard interrupt, just, just ignore it and carry on printing. It's obviously very unlikely that you would use that um, in your code. You wouldn't override keyboard interrupt intentionally, but even if I take this out, if I run this code now, um, just by virtue of having this accept statement in, it will actually override the keyboard interrupt shortcut. So let me save that. If I go back to my command prompt, and I'm going to run the file again, it's carrying on printing. Now if I do control C, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but basically no nothing is happening, so I'm unable to interrupt this program. 
Now, luckily, with Windows at least, there's actually a much more powerful keyboard um, stopping me mechanism, which is using the control and the pause break key. Now, unfortunately, on the machine I'm using, um, the keyboard doesn't actually have the pause break key. So what we're gonna have to do is I'm going to have to just temporarily pause the video, plug in another keyboard, uh, stop the program, and then come back to you. So just give me a second and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back and um, I used the control pause break on my other keyboard to stop it. It got all the way up there to, what's that, 637,920. But as you can see, I've, I've stopped the script and because I've used control pause break rather than the keyboard interrupt shortcut, I don't have the mess message back from the Python interpreter telling me that I, I use a shortcut, the keyboard interrupt shortcut to actually stop the program from running. Okay, so those are the ways that we can use our keyboard to, uh, to stop our scripts. Now what we're going to have a look at is we're going to look at our programmatic stops. So these are the times when we can actually build a stop mechanism into our script itself. So um, obviously, key thing first of all is this will only work if we know where we want to place the stops. So first thing is we have to understand our code and think, well, no, I want to stop here. We can, we, can, we can actually plan for where we want to do it. The second thing we have to bear in mind is that the actual method we use will, will depend on what, what we're using the code for. So um, what I mean by that is that basically uh, with Python we have we have development code, which is the code you'd use on, on your machine to develop something for your own intern, your own purposes, and then you have production code. Production code is the code that you'd You'd publish, it would go to the end client, it'd go to the user, sorry, the end user or the client, and that would be it would be debugged, um, it'll be documented well, it'll be structured well. That's production code. The uh, development code, as I say, is, is the code that we'd use just to just to play around with things, just to develop things, see how Python works, see how things operate. So the methods we're going to use now for the programmatic stops will depend on whether we're using it for development code or production code. Okay, so if we look at um, development code first of all, the thing we have to know is that every time we start Python, there's a module called site, S-I-T-E, that's automatically loaded. Um, and this comes with two particular objects we're gonna look at now. Uh, they come by default. One's called quit and one's called exit. Both of these work in the same way and they do pretty much the same thing and, and they do exactly what you'd expect them to. Again, the great thing about Python is that they don't try and make it difficult. So the quit and the exit functions do exactly that. They will quit and they will exit. So let's have a look at how we can use them. I'll go back to my code here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change this slightly so that uh, we can put in a little plan stop. So uh, I'm gonna get rid of this try. print and then over here we can say uh, let's say when uh, if x is greater than or equal to 5 oops 5 we are going to ask Python to quit so it's pretty much the same same code as before but we've just got a little um, if statement in here so we're, we're planning on an exit so once x gets to 5 we want the program to quit so let me just save that. If I go back here, what I'm going to do actually, let me just start another command prompt because I think this one is uh, going a bit too far down. Okay, so let me go to my documents file and I'm going to run test.py. Oh, there you go. So that's worked great. So there we go. One, two, three, four. And when it got to five, it, it stopped. And if I go back to my test and if I change the quit to exit, so if I go back here, change it quit to exit, and I run it again. <clears throat> There you go, one, two, three, four, and it's it's stopped. So as you can see, exit and quit 
both really work in, work in the same way. But the key thing, again, just, just to bear in mind, is that because they come with a module um, that's built into Python, that's automatically loaded with Python, we have no control uh, over whether that module is or is not loaded with the end user product. So um, because we can't control the loading of this site module, we really shouldn't use exit or quit in anything other than our development co code. Um, so let's have a look at what we would use in production code. Again, production code is the code that we're going to give to our end client, the end user. So just as we've seen um, exit and quit, there is another method which is called sys exit, and that's the, really the recommended way of um, incorporating stops in our production code. So the way that the sys exit work, the way that this function is going to work, is basically going to throw a system exit exception, which is going to close our Python interpreter, and it's going to stop the program from running. The uh, the advantage about this, and the reason that this is considered good practice and good coding, is uh, just over here. What we're going to do for this to work, we have to actually import the sys module. So by importing this module and explicitly including this import as part of our code, we're basically making sure that sysexit uh, will always be available. So let me just let me just save that. Oops, sorry. Let me just save that. You know what, actually, look, let me let me not, I won't import it to start with, so let me take away the import. So if I don't import it, what do we think will happen? Let me go back to my, uh, oh, let me go for a bigger one, command prompt, and if I run this again, See, so it, it only prints up to four, and then I get a uh, traceback error. Now, if we go back and it says the name sys isn't defined because obviously we haven't imported it. The reason that happens is because um, Python knows that when f x is greater than or equal to five, something should happen. It doesn't know what sys exit is, so that's why I get the uh, I get the traceback error. But it knows it can't go any further. So obviously we, we don't want traceback errors. So um, if I now import sys. I'm going to save that and if I run it again we should get one two three four and then get pro uh, Python to, to quit to stop there you go one two three four and Python has stopped so that's the six exit and that's really considered the best best practice for um, our programmatic uh, production stops Okay, so uh, the next one we're going to look at is actually uh, a pretty interesting one, actually, because we're going to raise a system exit directly. This really doesn't appear to be commonly used or even considered best best practice in everything that I've looked at. But for me, um, it has a few advantages over this, this sys exit, because uh, first of all, we don't have to import anything. And secondly, as, as I explained in the previous the sys exit example, what sys exit does is it raises a system exit. So um, this way, we're just doing it directly. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of my import. And uh, instead of that, I'm just going to ask it, if x equal to 5, I'm going to ask it to raise a system exit. So I haven't had to import anything. And if I now save that, and now I'm going to run my code again. There you go, 1, 2, 3, 4 and the program has uh, has ended so python stop stop the script afterwards so again um for me this this is really uh, a really clean uh, and really efficient way of stopping our scripts i'm not having to import anything and it goes directly to a system exit the the previous example we saw we had to import sys and uh, all that we were then doing was doing this anyway raising the system exit i i kind of i feel this is more true to the values of, of python but for some reason it's really not considered best best practice okay so the very last method we're going to look at is, is another way of uh, exiting or quitting our code um, programmatically and this is the os os exit method um we will have to import a module in this instance. It's the OS module. Uh, and the thing to bear in mind with this is that this module actually provides functions for interacting directly with our operating system. Um, and what this does is rather than just asking it to raise an exception and, and stop our script, it will actually ask for the, the, the program or the, the script to just be terminated immediately. So, so it really is quite an extreme um, 
way of doing things uh, because one, I say, you, you, you're, you're playing with the operating system and two, um, you're actually asking for immediate termination rather than just simply raise an exception. So let's have a look at how we can use this one. Okay, so for um, this one to work, we have to first, we have to import the OS module. There we go. And what we're going to do here, um, we're just going to change this and call up the OS exit command. One of the things to bear in mind, the key difference between this one and the other things we've saw, we, we, the other methods we've looked at, is that we can't actually pass an empty parameter here. So um, the previous examples, we had sysexit, exit or quit. We just passed it with empty parameters. Uh, with this one, we, we have to put a value in there and it's normally an integer sorry, value. And what we're actually going to do, what we're specifying, we're going we're gonna to tell it how we want the exit to take place, what status we want the exit to take place. How that works is probably a completely different video and article. Um, just, just again, take from this that zero is basically saying we want a, a, a normal exit. We don't want anything crazy to happen. We just want the system to exit as it normally would. So if I put a zero in there, again, I can't run that without an integer or something in there. So I, I have to pass something to that parameter. So I'm going to pass parameter zero. I'm saving it. So I've had to import OS and then I've had to pass a um, parameter in uh, in for, it, for it to work. So let me go back to my command prompt. I'm going to run the script again. And there you go. One, two, three, four, and uh, the Python program has stopped. Okay, so uh, there you have it, I guess. We, we've had a look at a few different ways of um, stopping our Python scripts. Uh, and it really will depend on whether we want to stop them arbitrarily through our keyboard, or if we can plan some, some stops in programmatically using our script to put the stops in the right place. Even when we're doing it programmatically, what we've seen is there it, the best practice will really depend on whether it's development or production purposes. Uh, and for production purposes, we've seen that sysexit is, is considered to be best practice and the most commonly used. But uh, we've also seen there's, a, there's an argument to say the um, raising the system exit uh, directly is actually more efficient and more in line with what uh, you know what we want to happen because we're not having to import any external libraries. Um, it's logical, uh, and I, I think it really uh, corresponds to all the attributes that make Python such a versatile and easy to use language. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, all the best with your programming.